Hi, welcome to your 14-day weather forecast. Things have been more mixed in recent days. Even some parts of southern and eastern England have had significant amounts of rain, but totals have varied a lot over short distances. Now, is there more wet weather on the way as we head through the next couple of weeks? Well, uh, let's take a look. Now, this is a picture at 18 GMT on Tuesday the 8th of July. There is some patchy rain in the northwest, but it's mainly dry. And keep an eye on developments to the southwest because high pressure from the Azores is starting to build. And as I run the sequence, what we see is high pressure extends over the UK, so it's going to be turning dry. In other words, there isn't more rain on the way because these rain-bearing weather systems are being held at bay in the Atlantic. And that continues to be the case as we head through the weekend. So lots of dry and increasingly warm or even hot weather is being strongly signaled here. But this is where forecast confidence starts to fall rapidly. This is 18 GMT on Sunday, the 13th. Still a mostly dry and very warm picture, perhaps a few showers in the north, maybe some patch outbreaks of rain in the northwest. But continuing this, what we see is an area of low pressure moves in and it brings some heavy showery rain and also cooler conditions back across all areas at least for a time because there is a signal at the very end here that high pressure will be starting to build once more. And I'm going to look at this period in a little bit more detail later on because the different models are handling it quite differently. But the upper air temperature and a jet stream sequence from the same uh, computer model, the GFS, here it is, the UK inside the red circle, the orange shading indicating warm air loft, and the mottled shaded area shows a fragmented jet. As I run it, what we see is the UK is often bathed in oranges, deep oranges for a time as well, but then it's more mixed. We have that area of low pressure moving through, and the jet stream's looking very fragmented, which isn't that unusual for this time of the year. So what does all that mean in terms of the day-to-day -day developments? This is the picture on a Wednesday afternoon, 25, 26, 27 in southern and central parts of Britain. So it's already warmer, even very warm, I guess. Further north, the temperatures also climbed into the 20s, at least in eastern Scotland, 22 to 24. So also warm up there. And that's going to be one of the key features of this hot spell or heat wave. The warmth is going to be spreading all the way northwards across the UK, unlike the first two, at least at times during the first two. Thursday afternoon, temperatures now possibly reaching 30 degrees in southern Britain. It's a dry and settled picture across virtually the whole of the UK, although just a chance of some patchy outbreaks of rain in northern and western Scotland. By Friday, temperatures have increased further under the area of high pressure. They are rising day by day, 32 over much of England and even uh, eastern parts of Wales. And you can see that warmth spreading into Scotland and Northern Ireland, 24, 25 degrees. So those temperatures are continuing to build in all areas. Then on Saturday, if this is as far as the UKV model goes, you can see that warm for hot weather extending all the way up across Great Britain, even northeastern Scotland touching 30 degrees there. Very warm or hot in Northern Ireland too. And 33 or 34 over England and Wales has been quite widely shown. I think Sometimes recently the UKV model has overshot temperatures by a degree or so. Nonetheless, the broad scale picture here is likely to be quite close to the mark and it's fine in all areas. Long sunny periods, it looks great weather for a barbecue if, if you like having barbecue in the heat. On Sunday and Monday, the temperatures are remaining high. We're using the GFS charts here. 30 degrees or just above there in southern and central counties in the north, 23 or 24. So lots of very warm or hot and settled weather developing through the early part of the forecast period. These are the temperatures from the Mogreps G ensemble plot for London. And you can see they're rising day by day and the lines are closely 
packed together, so indica indicating that the individual runs within this model are basically showing something very similar. It's only from about the 13th onwards where they start to diverge and forecast confidence begins to lower substantially. And that is to do with whether or not cooler air will be returning southwards and eastwards, or rather how quickly it could be expected to do so. These are the uh, upper air temperature forecasts for Nottingham. I've just used the location a little bit further northwards. And through the first few days, they're climbing up to about 15 degrees. These are at about 1,500 meters above sea level. They give an indication of the air mass. And there's quite good clustering there until around about the 14th when they start to diverge. And at the very end there, there is a big spread of possible outcomes. So it's all to do with where that area of low pressure goes and how fast the cooler, cooler air pushes southwards and eastwards. Rainfall, the forecast accumulations for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models, very low, virtually non-existent in most of the UK. Moving forwards to the 5 to 10 day part of the forecast period, so totals have increased in the north, or at least in parts of the north, but with that said, there isn't a huge amount of rain on either of these. The GFS had that area of low pressure pushing eastwards towards the end of the first week, so days six and seven, and I think that's where some of those uh, rain totals have been generated from in northern England, which you can see between about five and 15 millimeters. But that would also indicate that in the days which were to follow, it would be turning dry once more. And the ECM model there on the left indicating a greater chance of rain in the northern half of the UK. But those two taken at face value suggest a good deal of dry weather through the day five to day 10 part of the forecast period. So how do the deterministic models stack up with each other towards the end of the first week? As I've already indicated, confidence about the developments of this stage is low. And this is the GFS chart. Tuesday the 15th of July, it's the model which the initial animations were based on. Low pressure is close to the UK, so it's that cooler and more changeable theme which is developing at least for a time. The Canadian model, quite similar, low pressure here, a little bit further west though, it could make a significant difference on the details, but it's, it is there. The German icon conversely has high pressure building up from the southwest, low pressure there to the northwest and to the uh, southwest. The European ECM, almost a carbon copy actually, the high pressure building up from the southwest, it's a settled picture. The artificial intelligence version of the ECM model, low pressure just the west northwest of Ireland and Scotland, high pressure not building so strongly from the southwest. And the UK Met Office Global, it also has the area of low pressure centre to the west of the UK and it's high pressure which is starting to build up from the southwest. It's worth taking a look at the Mogreps G plots for the same time because these highlight quite nicely the uncertainty about what's going to be happening with that area of low pressure. You can see on some of the stamps, as they called each one of these stamps, shows the forecast from one run in the model. Uh, some have the low pressure moving across the UK, but most of them, I think, have it to the west or the northwest on Tuesday, the 15th of July. And there's just a possibility, it hasn't really been indicated here, that that could open the gate to very warm air moving northwards from southern Europe. So if there's an outside chance that we could see some very high temperatures at this point, a chance that it could be turning cooler and more changeable as well. On balance though, on balance at this stage, it looks as though high pressure will still be continuing to influence things strongly. So a good deal of dry and very warm or hot weather would be favored. So what happens as we head through the second week? Well, it's all about the trends and the probabilities at this stage, of course, and here's a 16-day GEFS plot for London. 850 HPA temperatures are forecast to be above the 30-year norm, the thick purple line there staying well above the thick black line throughout the second week. Just a few of the individual runs dipping below it at times, and I think fairly briefly when they do. So, above average. 
in terms of rainfall, often dry. There are some spikes appearing throughout the second week, but not a huge number, and also they're not very big, so it doesn't support the idea that we are likely to be seeing thundery plumes at this stage at least. I also wanted to bring up the European Ensemble chart, which shows something similar, because it reinforces the message. 850 HPA temperatures well above the long-term average, as can be seen on this part of the graph. And in terms of rainfall, the grey uh, numbers there indicate the percentage chance of dry conditions at the given time step. So through the second week, um, the red ones conversely show the risk of rain. And generally, it's between 70 and 90% chance of staying dry at each time step. So quite a lot of support for settle conditions here in the south from both the ECM and GEFS models. The GEF, GEFS based uh, temperature data tables for London, I think could be described as very warm through the second week, at least well above the average. Although there is, I mean, there is a fair amount of the orangey shading, which indicates 21 to 25, which isn't far from the average at this time of year, but still lots of red and a little bit of a pink, so 26 to 30 and over 30. The nighttime lows, dominated by this orangey brown, so 16s to 20s. I think there could be some fairly uncomfortable sleeping conditions up to Manchester. And once more, the signal is for above average 850 HPA temperatures. There is a greater chance of rain here though. There are more spikes and they are bigger as well. There are a few which indicate the potential for downpours here. So maybe a greater risk of thundery downpours further west in the UK. The two meter temperature data tables for Manchester, similar to the London ones, albeit at lower levels, the same sort of trends. Lots of this color, which is the 21 to 25, is less red, the 26 to 30s, and only a tiny amount of the over 30s. So lower temperatures through the days, likewise lower temperatures over night. Up to Glasgow and also here the signal is for above average 850 HPA temperatures. Most of the runs staying above that thick black line but there's an ongoing chance of rain. Quite a few spikes there. I think especially through the first half of the week there's just a weak indication perhaps that it will be turning more settled even here later on so from around the 19th to 20th to 21st of July. Two meter temperature data tables for Glasgow, not as high through the days as you would expect, as they were in Manchester and London, 16 to 20 is dominating, and the nighttime lows lower than they were in Manchester and London. There's still quite a lot of light green showing up there between 6 and 10, 11, and 50, 11 to 15, probably the dominant shading at least through the first few days. So. Once more, I think a lot of people in the London area who struggle to sleep through these hot conditions may well be very jealous to see what it's like in the northwest of the UK. Rainfall, the ECM ensemble charts here show the percentage chance of five millimeters or more of rainfall in, on a given day, the first three days of the second week. The green shading in the west and the northwest indicates between 25 and maybe 40 45%. So there is a significant chance, I think, of rain according to these charts in northern and western areas. It's drier, or at least the chance of it being drier is higher as you head southwards and eastwards. And the following three days, the same general trends are being indicated. Central and eastern counties of England, southern counties of England, only between 0 and 20 to 30% chance of seeing significant amounts of rain on each of these days. So that fits in quite well with the um, graph that I showed from the European Ensemble, um, the grey numbers indicating between 70 to 90% chance of dry weather at each time step in the London area. So wetter in the north and the west. The mean surface level pressure data table for York is quite interesting. Going through the second week, the amount of yellow increases, it's dominant to start off with, but towards the end there, it's increasing further. Little bits of orange are starting to return. Now, most of the yellow runs are close to, or a little bit above the average pressure for the time of the year. It is worth highlighting though, there is 
a significant amount of green in these columns. I think more than in recent weeks, and those runs which are low pressure dominated, 996 to 1,010 millibar. So it doesn't suggest that it's going to be a completely settled scenario, especially in central and northern parts of the UK. The GEFS mean surface level pressure uh, snapshot chart for Friday the 18th of July has the high building up from the Azores, 1,015 millibar line there over central parts of Britain. It doesn't look like a high pressure dominated scenario by any means when, you, when taken at face value, but a couple of caveats here. One is that this is generated from all of the individual runs, so they're, they're averaged out, so it can be masked in a range of outcomes. Also, this time of the year, it's high summer, pressure patterns tend to be a little bit slacker and less well defined, as can be seen on this chart, which is the comparable one from the European Ensemble. It's, it, it's difficult to read too much into this, perhaps, apart from saying that it doesn't look like we're going to be seeing a vigorous flow coming in from the Atlantic. There could be areas of low pressure drifting around small areas of low pressure near to the UK, which would lead to a chance of showery downpours, maybe some longer spells of rain too, but also the suggestion that we could be pulling up very warm air from the south, at least on occasion. So, to summarise, week one, fine weather spreads northwards and temperatures climb. It becomes hot with maximum values over 30 Celsius developing quite widely. The heat wave continues through the weekend, but then forecast confidence falls, cooler and more changeable conditions try to push southeastwards, and they probably will do at least for a time. Week two, often fine in the south but more changeable as you head northward so a greater possibility of rain in the north and probably the west of the united kingdom temperatures generally above the average although in wet spells they will dip and it will feel rather cool further very warm or even hot spells are possible particularly in the south so there we have it. Hot weather is on the way back, the third heat wave of the summer so far, and it's not even the middle of July yet. So it's looking like this summer is going to be significantly warmer than the long-term average, almost regardless of what happens through the second half of it. Are we heading for what will come to be remembered as an all-time classic? It's difficult to say, of course, forecast confidence when looking more than a week or so ahead is very low. My gut feel, though, is that we could well be doing so this year because what we're seeing is a pattern repeating, high pressure building across the UK, the changeable or unsettled spells rather short and not particularly potent. So were that to continue, summer 2025, could go down as one of the all-time classics. That's not a forecast, that's just a gut feel at this stage. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Then as ever, if you did, please consider hitting the like button below. Also subscribing to the channel if you've not done so already, because of course, if you do that, you'll not be missing any of my future updates. As well though, don't forget to stay up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.